Now, more stories, insights, and analysis of Illinois policy and politics. This is Illinois Rising, presented by the Illinois Policy Institute. Once again, your host, AM560's Dan Proft. Dan Proft back with Pat Hughes, co-founder of the Illinois Opportunity Project and this edition of Rising. And Pat, uh, last week we talked about uh, former Senate Super Minority Leader Christine Rodonio's uh, resignation. Uh, this week we uh, introduce people to the new Senate Super Minority Leader. He's a familiar name. He's been a candidate for governor three times, nominee of the party in 2010. State Senator Bill Brady, longtime legislator from Bloomington, is the new minority leader. And uh, what should we make of that? Because we spent a lot of time talking about the House, but over on the Senate side, we mentioned his name, but State Senator Dale Ryder, who bears a eerily striking resemblance to Howdy Doody. Does he really? Yeah, it's weird. Uh, Has anyone ever seen them in the same place together? Or? I don't know. That's we a good question. Qu- we should look, look into that. That's a good that. question. Yeah. Um, he uh, voted for the tax hikes to give Senate President John Cullerton, Madigan's, the godfather of Madigan's children, to um, uh, give give uh, Cullerton the supermajority he needed to pass the tax hikes and also to override the governor's veto, which the Senate did. And to protect Tom Cullerton, who narrowly won in a presidential cycle his Senate seat in 2016. Tom Cullerton, who's a distant Correct. relation of John Cullerton, and he's a state senator from eastern DuPage County, like the Villa Park, Bloomingdale area. And he's up again this year, Dan. Right. right? So he got protection on that vote another by suburb- Dale Ryder. Another suburban Democrat given protection by Republicans. Uh, helping to insulate them from electoral competition. Can I make a comment about Bill Brady? Look, I, I personally know Bill Brady, and you know he's you know he. I, I ran against him. I, yeah, I know. I, we're I know friendly. Well. We're friendly. I supported him. You supported him when he ran. But he's kind of like Illinois right now, like Illinois. You know, John McCain or John Kerry. Like this guy has been around forever. He lost the governorship. What is that? Seven or eight years ago. And now, oh look, he's popped back up, and he's Senate Minority Leader. Like, at what point do we say? And I'm not a big screaming, yelling about term limits, but at what point do we say we need new blood? We need fresh ideas. What's wrong with a Dan McConkey, who's a, a conservative, really smart, new, energetic? Why don't we go that route instead of going the route of the also rants? Well, I guess that speaks to the composition of the caucus in the Senate, much as we spoke about the composition of the caucus in the House with those uh, nearly a third of House Republicans who bolted to vote for the tax increase. Yeah, I mean, don't, let's not forget, too, uh, even though Bill has you know fairly conservative voting record and fashions himself a conservative, he was also spearheading for the last two and a half months this uh, grand bargain, which we've discussed, much like Voltaire said of the Holy Roman Empire, was neither grand nor a bargain. Uh, and and ultimately what passed the Senate, which is these tax hikes with phony baloney, no real spending reform, no real structural reform of the state, no change in the state's trajectory, which is at a 45 degree angle towards the ground. And um, uh, and so I, I'm, I'm, I'm not exactly clear what Brady represents. It's very much like Durkin following Cross, Brady following Redonia. The good news is Cross is gone. The bad news is Durkin follows him. The good news is that Redonia is gone. The bad news is that Brady follows her. These are sort of similar archetypes. Well, sure. I mean, Brady was in her leadership. I think he was her number two at the time that she resigned. And and so he's been in that milieu for all that time. They've worked together, just like you said, on the grand bargain. And this is why, I mean, the Senate is, the Senate's in worse shape numbers-wise than the House is. And has a, a, and a much longer way to go to come up with the majority. Look, if the planets aligned, Dan, the planets aligned in 2018 and Ronner got his act together, there's a chance to pick up six, seven, eight, nine seats in the House. But the Senate, the, you know, there's these elections are spread out over several years. There's such a long way to go there. So you see in this leadership sort of the old retread. There is a couple new people in there that we could go with, but they just want to keep trolling out the same folks, which is very disappointing and leads to these types of policies. Yeah, and, and also, too, I mean, the race for leader just to backstory it a little bit because this was kind of buried in how they ultimately came out of the closed room and announced who the new super minority leader was going to be replacing Rodonio. It was really between Brady and McConaughey, Karen McConaughey from Kane County, who's another, even though she hasn't been in the Senate that long, she was the Kane County board chairman before that, kind of another lifer, uh, 
public official, transactional in nature, sort of tries to be cute and play both sides against the middle. You know, I'm with Ronner and his agenda, but then I'm also cozying up to the moderates who want to surrender to Madigan. And um, so it was between those two. And then Dan McConkey, who you mentioned, was kind of a potential consensus if the very small 22 member caucus was uh, hopefully deadlocked between the two of them. Ultimately, Brady was able to cobble together the 13 votes he needed, and then they made it unanimous to feign unity. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's kind of like a long way to go in numbers with respect to the other side, but it's very much like the House. You can't even contemplate the other side until you get your own house in order, and neither the governor's office nor the offices of the leadership of the two caucuses in the General Assembly, the Republican caucuses, are in anything resembling order. Yeah, and this past July 4th weekend, Dan, proved that that's the case. I mean, I think we suspected it. I think there was some fear about it. Now there is proof that there is a long way to go before we can even think about taking on the other side.